Ted, what is the message that Australian business needs to understand about how, yes, there's lots of money in them, the hills, but there's a lot of influence that comes with that money? Good evening, Paul. I think the key message to Australian business is we need to respond collectively when it comes to dealing with communist China. Uh, one of the tactics that China will use is to try and divide and conquer. Uh, we saw this in how they tried to use the Belt and Road Initiative, the BRI, to effectively pick off different state governments, despite the federal government not signing up. We see it how they do it internationally, trying to take trade away from one liberal democracy to substitute with another. And they do it within Australia by trying to pit the Australian business sector against the Australian government in the hope that the government will fold under domestic pressure. Uh, we have to be alive to this. They're playing a very different game from the game we play. And it's vitally important that our business leaders are every bit as aware of this as are our political leaders. Now, I understand the profit motive. I'm a capitalist, OK? Um, but what is always amazing is that there are endless corporations, from banks that won't loan money about climate change to the social dividend of insert every other company, right? They've all um, decided to put, you know, people before profit and values before profit, insert whatever the issue happens to be. Why doesn't this seem to extend to communist China, that it ain't like anywhere else in the world, that people who have a religious belief that is not approved by Beijing are sent off into, uh, into camps, slave labour is constantly involved there, the depersoning of people who the, 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 the central government disagrees with, yet the very companies that want to tell us they are oh so clean on insert social issues in Australia have nothing to say about this source of revenue and where it comes from. You know, Paul, some Australian businesses absolutely get it. They get it right. And they're working with government to try to ensure that we have a constructive relationship with the People's Republic of China, but we stand firm on our values absolutely. and we do not compromise. The thing that frustrates me is when you do get other business leaders who try to step up use a megaphone domestically in Australia and give gratuitous advice to the government using motherhood statements like, you know, you need to understand the importance Manage the of relationship. Um, e e exactly right. I mean, seriously. Um, companies have a role to play. Um, they have to deliver on shareholder value. Get that completely. However, it is the responsibility of the government to take a holistic approach. It is the responsibility of government to put the security and safety of its people, its country, and indeed the long-term prosperity of the economy first. And we just need to make sure that our government and our business community work together and everybody understands the game that Communist China is playing. Yeah, with you completely. And as for Penny Wong, per perfect example, right, about this each way, elbow way of doing things, where, again, manage the right, all the code that's there for, oh, don't push, don't push. And I love the lefties that turn around and say, Australia must lead on climate change, but you're not allowed to lead when it comes to Western values in China. Yeah, look, look, uh, Paul, uh, Penny Wong, I couldn't hear the grab that you played before, so thanks for that. Um, <laughs> it was wonderful, actually, to not hear her voice. <laughs> um, but it, it, that speech of hers last week was just dripping wet with absolute hypocrisy. Um, her key theme was suggesting the Prime Minister is politicising the relationship with China. Yet her entire speech was a political speech. Yes. I mean, this is the alternative Foreign Minister basically bagging out the Australian Prime Minister. How is that in our national interest? And if it's not, then she's not befitting of an alternative foreign minister, let alone a foreign minister if they were ever to win this government. Absolutely. Good on you, mate. Thank you so much. Really like talking to you. Uh, Tom O'Brien's his name. He's a Liberal MP up on the Sunshine Coast. Lovely to talk to him.